In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to retrieve absorption cross-sections from the Hydrant database. Uh, before, we were explaining to you how to retrieve line-by-line -line parameters. Unfortunately, for many molecules, we cannot uh, provide um, sufficient line-by-line uh, -line lie lists uh, that would allow you to reproduce um, the laboratory atmospheric spectra. This is usually the case for the molecules where the density of lines uh, is extremely high, so that would be the molecules uh, with the uh, low-line uh, vibrational modes or very heavy molecules, uh, for example. So we do have here in the definitions and units explanation of uh, how uh, Hytron experimental absorption cross-section data is uh, parameterized, and um, you can uh, read this to be able to work with the data. Uh, here I'm just going to show you how to retrieve this data from Hydran. We have about 300 molecules, or I should say spectra for about 300 molecules uh, in the absorption cross-section format. And uh, these are usually uh, the basically the intensities as a function of uh, wave number recorded at different thermodynamic conditions in uh, different laboratories. Uh, so if you are looking for a particular mo molecule, um, we uh, have different aliases for names of the molecules. So you can search by formulas. Uh, for instance, uh, if I type methanol, I can find uh, uh, these uh, cross sections. So we have it um, in different uh, wave number ranges. Um, the, they are recorded different thermodynamic conditions and if you hover a mouse of the parameters it tells you where the data is coming from and uh, I can show you the example of how to uh, retrieve data at different uh, spectral regions and different thermodynamic conditions I have to keep in mind that uh, some files are fairly large, uh, so you'll have to wait a little longer for the uh, cross-sections to be plotted. You can see uh, we basically have two spectral ranges uh, for these particular cross-sections now. Uh, you would see the plots uh, only if you selected uh, less than six cross-sections. Um, also, these are all those individual cross-sections that you requested. And uh, there is, a, of course, a, a bibliography for the uh, sources um, of the cross-sections you requested. And there is a zip archive where all of these files are bundled together. Uh, the interactive plot allows you to uh, zoom at different spectral regions so you can see that um, there are different uh, temperature and pressures. Uh, so of course, the lower the pressure, the more resolved the spectrum is, and um, the higher pressure, uh, the lines are, are blend in together due to pressure broadening. Now, if you Uh, try to search for molecule and for some reason you cannot find it, do not be discouraged. It does not necessarily mean that we do not have it. Uh, the problem is that uh, although we try to put all possible aliases and formulas for the cross-section, sometimes uh, these, uh, uh, the amount of aliases per molecule is uh, quite extreme. So what we suggest you to do is uh, to search by a Cas number. So Cas number is uh, basically a number um, which is a unique uh, numerical identifier uh, for any uh, chemical substance, and chemical abstract service maintain uh, the service. So, for instance, if uh, I want to find uh, bromochloromethane uh, Cas number, I can just search for it, and uh, in uh, Google would be sufficient. It would give me that. Uh, 
bromochloromethane Cas number uh, is uh, 7497 N5. Uh, and he here above you can see how many aliases the molecule uh, have. And unfortunately, we may not have all of these aliases coded in yet uh, because um, it's uh, quite hard to do it per every molecule. But if I do search by this Cas number, uh, you can see that uh, bromochloromethane was found uh, using this uh, unique identifier and uh, we have uh, cross sections uh, for it uh, which uh, I can select and plot again here just as a reminder uh, how we can plot it um, the, it, it does take uh, a little bit of time uh, but uh, here it is uh, uh, cross sections of uh, bromochloromethane and uh, thermodynamic conditions are coded in the file names uh, let's see how we can read uh, the cross-sectional files. So here I downloaded another example. Uh, this is a methyl nitrate. So you can see that the actual cross-sections are preceded with a, a header, which contains a lot of important information uh, about the cross-sections. Uh, this is a, an explanation what actually is contained in the header. So you can see that the, uh, there is a molecular uh, chemical formula at the beginning, then um, uh, you are given a minimum wave number and maximum wave number, uh, the number of points, the temperature at which the cross-sections were recorded, uh, the pressure, uh, then there is a maximum cross-sectional value, so you, you have an idea uh, what's an order of the uh, absorption in this band, or in, the, in this file, I should say. Um, then you are given uh, the instrumental uh, resolution, uh, the common name for the molecule, so in this case, is a uh, methyl nitrate. The broader, and so there is a um, nitrogen buffer gas was used in this particular example. And 88 is uh, our internal reference, and um, I, I showed you how to uh, download the reference for the particular cross section uh, in a previous uh, uh, few minutes. Now let's see how we can read uh, the actual values so you can see it's not that easy to understand uh, what is where and um, it's really uh, um, the format of the hydron cross sections is dictated by um, the radiative transfer codes that were starting to develop uh, decades ago and those codes were concerned with the uh, uh, amount of data uh, inside each file that goes into the uh, radiative transfer codes and uh, therefore we still uh, maintain this format, although there are probably more modern ways of doing it, uh, for instance, using HDF5 uh, formats and so on. But uh, uh, this is uh, due to uh, basically the tradition and uh, which is still being uh, followed uh, here. And it's important because some of these uh, radiative transfer codes are still in use. Uh, so you can see that the wave numbers are not actually provided here. So they're uh, cross sections are given uh, in a, a sequential manner, so uh, but you can read them uh, knowing how uh, you can start with a minimum wave number and uh, follow in this step. So let me show you the example. So the cross sections that I showed here are basically can be read in into column format uh, wave number versus cross sections the following way. So the uh, 520. Uh, 0.0235 wave numbers is a minimum wave number, so that corresponds to the first value of the cross section, and so on. So you read the file from left to right, and then uh, start with the next uh, line. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, this is uh, how you read it. Uh, there is one important thing that uh, you also have to keep in mind that. Uh, Again, per tradition, and because of the requirement of those uh, radiative transfer codes, the negative cross sections that sometimes occur in the experimental spectra are zeroed out here. So you, you see some zero values here. So that could mean if the value was actually zero, or if it could be a negative uh, cross sections measured. Of course, if you are interested in um, uh, seeing the actual spectrum with the negative cross sections that uh, may allow you to understand some details about the uh, instrument or, or that was used to record those cross sections, um, you can go to the uh, Hytron website to the supplemental folder. 
and the supplemental folder can be uh, found here as I showed you uh, in the first tutorial and the uh, supplemental uh, absorption cross sections are provided this link and uh, we do um, maintain here either the data um, in a two column format with the negative values that were provided to us uh, by the contributors for instance PNNL cross sections are provided in this way uh, but um, also we have some alternative data for some of the molecules so if we sometimes choose a certain reference over another we sometimes also keep the uh, alternative data in this folder but um, you can see the cross-sectional data here uh, which is for instance if it was PNNL it would be presented here in a two column format uh, in hydron units but with negative absorption cross-sections present um, so not zeroed out. To find out more about the cross-sections that are currently given in Hytron I uh, recommend you reading uh, this article that uh, recently uh, appeared in Journal of Quantitative uh, Spectroscopy and Radiative Transfer. It gives some feedback and examples of uh, how we chose certain cross-sections uh, to be um, uh, entered into the database. And uh, with that, I thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.